Very tan. Here we go, we're just leaving. Old center point. Coming out to Biden Cope's Lane. Now this is a notorious laneway in Hobart. It's been painted for a couple of decades now, if not a few. It's still full of work cars at the moment. But this is the legal spot in um, Hobart City now. There's a, a portrait of Grace Chia. Topsky painted that for her when she um, won her award. Grace has been absolutely killing it in every every aspect, every every lane. She's absolutely going hard. She's such a good, strong person. It's really cool just seeing everything she's doing and who she's bringing along with her and how much she's facilitating a lot of the scene. But we're catching up with Topsky today. Topsky also has been painting this for Palestine. Yeah, free Palestine, straight up. The occupation that's still going on there. It's on some deep, deep shit, you know, and I've been trying to learn as much as I can about it and be aware of what's going on. And once again, the system's not always right. And you can really tell who's in power in the system at the moment and what side of the, um, the war they're on. But yeah, this is a, either way, this is a classic um, alleyway. Can't wait for, um, can't wait for Topsy to come down. He's going to tell us a bit about this spot, a bit of history. Because yeah, when I was young, I still, I still have memories of, um, <laughs> hey, Miss Kinney. There you go. I think she's performing down at Portalina today, to the Portalina Festival. But, um, yeah, I, I have early memories of this, this alleyway still being painted quite regularly. It's a big Jarman piece. Jarman is the OG. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was originally in, in Die Laughing Crew, which was a, um, a street art crew back in the day. Pacey, Jarman. There's another guy in there, I'm pretty sure, as well. But yeah, we had a full street art crew, and they were pretty big. They hit Sydney really hard. I remember in the early Australian graffiti books, um, yeah, you could see a lot of Die Laughing's work through there. Old foams. And then we've got a giant portrait of Brian Ritchie. Now, for those that don't know who Brian Ritchie is, you can't really see it from this angle. But Brian Ritchie was in the Violet Femmes, which was a, a big band back in the day. I remember the first time I saw or heard of his band was on Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Um, they were in an episode. And yeah, he moved to Tasmania a long time ago. He works for Mona and has a lot to do with Mona Fimo and all that sort of stuff. But he's kind of like one of the most sort of successful, you know, pop music celebrities that live amongst the Tasmanian community. So he's been responsible for doing a lot of stuff. I've met him a few times and had a few good chats with him. I remember when, when, when Corona was going on, saw him out at Mona and he was still touring America right in the peak of Corona. So just goes to show until you know. But um, yeah. Oh, Brian Ritchie. He's got such a straightforward really um dry sense of humor too he's very hard to understand when he's joking <laughs> but he's a lovely fellow and he's shown me nothing but respect and i've got nothing but respect for him oh, another year older it's a dope character i think behind these cars we've got spire Fire. Got a Lucy, a soloist. In the back, 
the back of here is uh, Pooh Bar upstairs there so there's been a few clubs running that venue over the years and I remember you could get down the stairs in the venue and come out the back here some crazy times all happening you know everyone would be full in the club up there but then the alleyway would be full man that's a burner it's very nice I like that piece But yeah, my early memories, I remember there was a Badger piece. Badger was like a, uh, a fella named Sven, and he really had a dope style back in those days. I remember that piece. And then it was um, buffed for like over 15 years. Oh, maybe 10. It was buffed for a long time. Friar Topsky's dope. The legend should be down here shortly. Hope will always bloom. It's quite sweet, isn't it? I like that little painting. The sunflowers are very nice. Not too sure about that one. Man, some video clips have been filmed here over the years. You can see why. gates open why not why not get up the top surely they left it open just for us Go wild, go wild, go wild. Oh, a sneaky piece over there. Classic spot. Classic. The boy Odious, the one and only. The one and Odie. So don't do this. See this? Don't do it. Capping, it's not good. Palestine's lives matter. Plus culture, plus history, plus buildings, plus rivers, plus land. They all matter. They all do. The world does matter. Especially Palestine. I wonder Nerve spelt his name wrong. <laughs> but yeah, what happen what's happening in Palestine is obviously extremely complicated, but it's extremely immoral. It's amazing what um, politics and all that side of shit can really do to convince people to think that it's okay to do what's happening. 
don't allow yourself to become too desensitized. You know, what's happening is fucking happening. It can be very overwhelming sometimes. There's Topsky's link. If you want to go check out Topsky's stuff, there's his Discord. Screenshot that and go hit the link. Big top ski. Look at Orca, the crazy cunt climbing out there. He went hard, old Orca. He really, he really smashed it. I remember at one point, the Eastern Shore Council, they knew who he was and they hit me up and they told me to tell him to stop bombing so hard. So it goes to show that there are some good people out there that, you know, was just trying to encourage youth to do what he loved um, and didn't want him getting in trouble, but wanted him to channel it in a healthy outlet. Man, that O-Res piece is fucking burn up. Look at that. That is the spot. How did he pull that off? That's hectic. That is... It's probably one of the best spots I've ever seen in Hobart. Look at it. A chicken feed is all you'd need because a little goes a l Free Palestine. THC for peace. Chicken feed for peace. Yeah, man, what they're doing is it's horrific. It's genocide. And it's going to spill over. I don't want to get too deep into predicting the end of the world, but we all know where it's at. That's why it's truth. It's, you know, it's important to find your truth and to find your light right now. Understand what's happening and break free from the conditioning. Oh, there's that billboard. Pretty high place to have a basketball ring. Wonder if anyone could slam dunk that. Wonder what that's for. The old Barney Cope Laneway. Another soloist piece. He's definitely up there, old solo. Well, while we wait for Topsky, I might walk up and check out this another little alleyway. It stinks of piss, but Topsky's decked it out. I'll show you some more of the Topsky work. Here's the apple that you'll see in the Apple Isle Style album, old Gravenstein. Topsky designed Gravenstein and he's become a bit of a theme through the uh, Tassie hip hop scene. It's what I love about our, our scene and our culture. We really, we really do it, you know? What we did for the Brisbane Hotel, I think, was really special. You know, we're really grateful to get feedback from the guys that used to run the pub, and it meant the well to them, which is, like, the most important thing about this. Doing this sort of culture is what it means to us, how it connects up. And it's all about expressing yourself. And also, I think the one thing that's kept our culture and our scene so strong is, like, it's just the honour. And that's what the Brisbane Hotel connection was so special because it was all of us going back to this space and honoring the energy that once existed in there you know the more that we honor it the more that we can just feel that strength in the community it's really about celebrating each other there we go bees mural by topsky Bees will get you through times with no money. 
Better than money will get you through times with no bees. This is what we're talking about, Topski. We need to look after the bees. We need to look after the planet. Oh, Wombat. And the Tassie Devil with a broken arm. Then some Raman Fever High Five. That's the ultimate shout out. DJ Then some Lord Raman Fever and High Five. Yeah, shout outs to Fever. The little Tassie Tiger. All I wanted was a sheepy. Just one sheepy by Topski. And this spot smells like piss. The old prawn. Little seal. See this tag pan? Fuck, I spent years trying to find out who that was. He used to get up crazy. He had tags everywhere, inside the psych ward, in the hospital, in jail, in everywhere. Every institution, every little underpass. Pan. And then it turns out, there's actually a guy that I met when I was like 11. And I met him in Channel Court, down in Kingston, back when it used to be packed in a different way before they kind of rebuilt it. And uh, yeah, he showed me what tagging was back then. So it's a blowout that probably the first guy that actually showed me what tags was ended up being this guy. And yeah, he's not a graffiti head, he's just a tagger. He's just one of those random units that's always had a tag and just done it, you know? And you find that with um, graffiti and tags, it draws a lot of unique different people in. And you find some people that are just dedicated to their tag. It's part of their identity, you know? Yes, yeah, so there's a little tour of Biden Coats. Getting a little windy. Give it a pause and wait for Topski to get down here. Here he is. Look at him. The one and only. Big Topsky. How you doing, my bro? Fuck yeah. I've just been walking around filming and documenting all the pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You've pretty much got most of the pieces down there, yeah. mate. I've had most, most of the spots once. Yeah, oh, definitely, bro. You would have painted every spot. This is a good one. The portrait there. Yeah. It's good to see more people having a crack at it. So he's been painting here just about every night for about five years. Yeah, right. Yeah. Does she have a word that she writes or she just does paintings and dates it? She paints it and dates it and documents it. She's making a book at the moment. Sick. Yeah. Fuck yeah, my bro. Yeah, good to see you, Grills. You too, my bro. How good was the Brisbane Hotel connection? Oh! <laughs> Mind you, like after four recordings of a seven and a half minute song, yeah. my voice was gone. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Man, fuck yeah, though. Oh man, it was so special. Your verse is probably one of my favourites. Oh, right, thank you. Yeah. We relive the memory. Yeah. Man, it was such a, I don't know, it's such an honour, bro. I was, just, <laughs> I was explaining it as I was filming before on this set, like, I think what I really love about our scene and what's making it so special is how much honour is going on between it, like, but, now, yeah, the older generation is honouring the younger generation, yeah. the younger is honouring the older, and... Who painted that? That's Deems. Ah, it's Deems. Yeah. He's a burner, eh? Yeah, he's great. He's from England originally, eh? Yeah, somewhere over there, yeah. Yeah. Real good work, Came down here and just started painting quality from day one. Yeah. To make a job out of it, you know? So what was the first years you remember gra graph and graffiti down in this alleyway? In the 80s there was... Up here, I don't have a look. Yeah. Like this bit here, it was all tags, just tags. Just tags. No yeah. pieces or anything? No, not really. It was pretty like a buff spot. Yeah. Uh, it was um, PK Security. It used to be the security firm for Centerpoint. Interesting, PK Security. Yeah, and Benji they that. hated Graf with a vengeance and shit. And they'd have all their cars here and they'd be always looking out here. Yeah. 
But this was Warzone. Warzone? It was a fucking illest burner. Like, best in Tassie. At the best pace. Best it's, pace for 10 years. Yeah, and it said Warzone. Yeah. Yeah, right. Do you know who did it? Um, Scratch and Specs. Yeah. We also did the King of Clubs, which was the very first legal. Interesting. Like on the corner up here where that big mural is by me. Where's Brian Ritchie? Yeah, the Ritchie piece. Yeah. It used to be King of Clubs. Yeah. It was just like a deck of cards, King of Clubs sort of thing. Interesting. And that, so that section was... Okay. That section was the first legal part. Yeah, that was the very first legal in Hobart. Interesting. What year was that? 84. 84. True. Well, scratch and scratch. Yeah. On yeah, Warzone. Paid in Coca Cola. You got paid in Coca Cola. Yeah, they were all like 16 and shit. Oh, wow. What a day. We'll pay you in ice cream and Coca Cola. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like. Fuck like, yeah, give us a place to paint. Yeah, it like, sounds like the 1940s. Yeah. Pretty much. Tasmania in 1984 would have been like the 40s compared to like California. <laughs> Pretty rancid, like. But just in, you know, especially in that straight culture as it adapted and spread across the world. When we now kind of look at how quick culture kind of grows because we're all connected compared to back then. Yeah. It was a massive cultural difference. Yeah. I guess now that we see from a lens of like a a one Western world style culture is it all becomes that and keeps flowing into each other. Because yeah, there it's, was only like fucking, there was like for an example of what people had for experiencing other cultures when I moved here from Sydney yeah. in like the 80s, I was like, what? There's only one TV station? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. for real? That's all the fucking outside influence you'd get. Man, it's crazy. Like, and they could control the narrative with and that so much. They could control the narrative. Every single person's mode of thought, because you could only watch the one channel. That's Every, Everyone knew the lyrics to the same ads. Yeah. Least, you know, well, when I was a kid, there was at least four channels. Yeah. Yeah. One channel's still oh, more it was hectic. ABC and Taz TV. Okay. And then they got SBS. Yeah. Yeah. What year did SBS come in? I don't remember. Yeah. But it was years before they got anything else. Not that it, that's fucking matters. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. It's still definitely interesting because, you know, especially with hip hop culture, it, yeah. it really came down to you the dribs and drabs that we could get. It was not advertised. Yeah. When hip hop was getting popular in the 80s, radio stations would say, we play no rap, no heavy metal. Yeah. Non-stop rock. A anti, um, it was like pop thing. music. Hello, Alice. Hello. Hey, baby. How you going? Good. Old doggo. Yeah, it's interesting, bro. Because I guess this alleyway, you can see it as like a gallery for the culture as it's yeah. grown over the years. You know what I mean? And now yeah, we're at yeah. the point where it looks like Melbourne. You know what I mean? Oh, like, wonderful. Yeah. When Youth Arc opened, they did a legal wall along here. Was that when the Badger piece was there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because I remember yeah. that big Badger piece. That's my earliest memory. Yeah. That sounds about right, that it was a Youth Arc legal or something like that. Yeah, and... Oh, that was sick. That was 2000 on, or late 99. Yeah. When they first opened. Yeah, no, that sounds about right. I remember coming through here when I was like a kid on a Saturday with my mum coming to Centre Point, walking out to the back to the alleyway yeah. and seeing that, you know what I mean? So it sounds about right in my line of memory. Yeah, yeah that kind of kicked off some beef though as well. Like, yeah. The legal beef. Yeah, the legal beef. Yeah. Was that the beef between kind of the writers and the street artists? Does, we were all writers. Yeah. We got, we got a place to paint, so we rocked up. Yeah, yeah. And then those who didn't rock up missed out on the wall, came and capped it. And yeah. It, well, you should have fucking been here on the day, bro. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There was literally 20 people writing in Hobart. Right? Well, it's true. I kind of like... <laughs> it was like, you just missed out and you pissed off. So yeah. So you started a war. Yeah. That was your, you want our spot. Well, yeah. that's it. It was fighting over the top it spot. It was. Yeah. And some of them just didn't want to be legal. Yeah. That's why they didn't rock up. Yeah. You know, fair call. But you know, fuck, free paint. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that started a bit of a bit of beef. The original sort. Was even there any beef though, before that? People, yeah, well, of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. For sure. Ter territorial turf shit. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. It's really like, tribalism. Yeah. Like, yeah. I want to make a like a um, have a yarn about drill music soon, and just how that's really just playing into the tribal sort of ways, and I guess. For so many of us that 
do graffiti and do tagging, we've felt disconnected from a lot of the world that we're in, and we've kind of ta tapped into this um, this subculture that gave us a universe to be a part of, and to peep, you know, once yeah. again, definitely somewhat on the spectrum of how we all just obsessed with this this um, this art that also you'd risk your safety for. You'd go punch on over graph. You know what I mean? Like it was crazy. Yeah, brother. So up here was the first, first legal wall. How you going, lads? How you going well? Filming a vlog, brother. That's the way, lad. You want to have a yarn? Huh? You want to have a yarn? What's your name, brother? What's your name? Jasper. Jasper, how you doing, bro? Yeah, not too bad yourself. Yeah, good, man. How about yourself, bro? Liam. Nice to meet you, Liam. I'm just uh, filming like a bit of a vlog about the history of the graffiti here. Oh, yeah. Whereabouts did you fellas grow up? I'm from Victoria. Man. Victoria, true. Six years, though. No, bro. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just like, because we didn't really have too much of a graph scene down here. Be a bit different to Victoria, eh? Yeah, You'd be yeah, used to these sort of alleyways. And all that, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Did yeah, you grow up in the city in Melbourne? Uh, nah, man, more of a fucking. Yeah, Gippsland way. Yeah, you Gippsland, know? yeah, Gipsland. sweet. How's the graph scene out there? Uh, small, but yeah. Small. Still some burners? Yeah, still. Yeah, sick. Fuck yeah, fellas. Well, cheers, brothers. Good to meet you, uh, man. Yeah. You too, brother. On you, bro. Good See good you later, Jasper. See you, Liam. Bless. Yeah, Gippsland, man. Uh, yeah, fuck yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't spent too much time out that way, but uh, from what I can tell, Gippsland and Taraugan, really similar to Tassie. There's heaps of families that moved over to those those parts um hundred years ago so there's a lot of distant cousins from tasmania that are living in gippsland or rural, rural victoria so yeah this was officially the first legal war 1984 so going on 40 years it's been 40 years there's a better better look at the portrait of brian Ah, here we go. Since the 1980s, Biden Copes Lane has been a meeting place for local graffiti and street artists to create their work. In 2019, a section of Biden Copes Lane was turned into Hobart's first street art permission wall. 2019, they're a bit late. 1984, Topsky reckons. With a permit in hand, anyone can make their mark on the permission wall, temporarily adding their artwork to the laneway until the space is reclaimed again by the future artist. The Biden Copes Lane Street Art Project is a city of vibrance program developed in collaboration with Vibrance. So yeah, Johnny Skulls, he's the fellow that kind of really put in the work to get this legal again. But bless you, Johnny, you can't claim the first. 1984, this was a legal wall. And even then, you're probably only allowed it down here a bit. How's this? It's got a plaque over there and it reckons in 2019, this became the first legal wall in Hobart. <laughs> Calm down, Johnny. <laughs> you can't go claiming that one. <laughs> it's a bit 40 uh, years too late. Permanent legal wall. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's so good as. Yeah, I think so, maybe. Yeah. But no, in 2000, I used to run legal graffiti workshops in the Rivulet. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, well, that was some of my earliest workshops I went to. So it was that's down a there. Wall. That's a when... wall. Yeah. Because it's underground, doesn't mean it's not a wall. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I went down the review like the other day and filmed a bit of a vlog. Yeah, so, I saw that. It was sick, man. Did you like it? What do you reckon of the it. wave and tape? Do you reckon uh, that? Dude, it was underneath the fucking gap. There was, oh, there was, right. There's light All coming right. up from right, next, right above yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Ruined Christmas. Yeah, it's <laughs> ghost on the Grinch. <laughs> but, um... Spirits down there for sure. I definitely go to... spirits down there, but that bit of tape wasn't one of them, mate. Yeah. yeah. Could I'm convinced. It's still could probably waving right. to this day. It could be waving right now. Yeah. I want to go back down there with a better torch. Yeah, I just bought a yes, dolphin well, torch today really and a head bought. torch. Did you? Oh, yep. Go. Oh, there we go. Just bought them today. Fate says. Fate says. I've got, got to test them out down there. Got I don't a know about. Torch. Yeah. They're not in my bag right now, though. Oh, we'll work it out. We'll do it yeah, very, 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 very soon. Yeah, yeah I've got to check the dolphin torch out in the water. <laughs> see yeah. It seems to me a lot of the capping beef has definitely died down in this sort of era of yeah, graffiti. Yeah, I can know that's good. Yeah. Yep. This just is what it is, like... Yeah. It's just if you, if you want the spot, you have to keep painting. Yeah. You know... And people have realised, oh, there's so many spots. Like, why did they keep going over that one spot? Oh, there's one right next door. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I could use that. Oh, there's a roof that no one's hit. Fuck. Oh, that's it. It's endless. Right. Yeah. 
Do you think that um, it's quite interesting? I was, you know, walking around checking out Graph. I had a few people say that, you know, I'm talking about community, but yet tagging is anti-community. As someone like you, you know, you're one of the first graffiti artists in Hobart. That I'd say you're definitely one of the first and the most consistent graffiti artists in Hobart over the last, you know, 30 years, man. Overall, what would you say is the main danger to the youth and the community, and where does graffiti come into play with it? Oh. Well, danger to the youth probably. No. Like in the long run, violence, for me now... Violence coming from slightly older youth. Yeah, violence. Which is definitely a part of the culture and the environment. I think yeah. for me, like, alcohol is way more dangerous than graffiti is. Like, don't get me wrong, there's a couple times of climbing into a place where you shouldn't and hurting yourself. Yeah. So things like that. But generally, when I think about the actual issues affecting our community, if everyone was, you know, like... Painting, because like every time that we'd it's organise it, it's just art. You know what I mean? Own. Like, it's art with a terrorist label. Yeah. Because it disturbs the peace for people. No, that, because it can change people's minds. Because it can change people's minds. That's right. It's illegal. Yeah. It's a different narrative. Is much worse. A McDonald's sign encourages kids to get diabetes. That's graffiti, exactly it. Graffiti encourages you to think for yourself. Like. That's so like, true. Yeah, the building yeah. wall wasn't black. That's a very good point. Alice yeah, comes in with the, the fucking Palestinian wall. Yeah. I wonder how Banksy's hotel's doing right now. Yeah. Don't see that on the news. Really. Yeah. Where's Banksy's hotel? Fucking in Palestine. Interesting. In Bethlehem. He's got two. Yeah, he's bought another one, yeah. Where right, is Right, looking Banksy? at the fucking wall that Israel built. Like True. He, he built it like six years ago, seven years ago. Fuck, man, that's crazy. Yeah. I wonder what Banksy's doing right now. That's what I want to know. <laughs> probably fucking fighting. He didn't do the Christmas nativity um, with all he the did. children of Palestine. He did. Oh, did he? And, and yeah, like, because there's plenty of, plenty of like, Christian children in Palestine as well as... Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's fucking like, Bethlehem. It's yeah. the oldest Jewish Christian church in the world. Well, it was until it got bombed in the world. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Oh, it's absolutely insane. But that's it, another story. It is another story, you know. But graffiti can help people stop fighting. Well, make, that's it. You can put up facts that aren't on the news. Yeah. And then kids are like, why the fuck are you going to do that, Dad? Hmm. And they've got to admit it's because of their bank account in the end. But Well, you know, we're in a country that's claiming, you know, ceasefire, but is also contributing yeah. mechanisms to the bombs that are being dropped. Yeah, you know, the dollar. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. Our government is a hypocrite and a large one of that. Yeah. Back on why graffiti is illegal and advertising is not is because one makes money and one stops making money. I guess when they, they started accepting graffiti into the mainstream culture, when it started making money. <laughs> exactly. That's it's fucking... kind of killed itself. Damn. It's graffiti suicide. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting, man. Yeah. Yeah, I think it should be, be called street media. Street media. Because it's doing a lot more than just being art. And it's doing a lot more than just damage. Yeah. It's fucking doing a lot, you know. 100%. And it's always changing. I think especially in places where they try and hide the truth a lot, you know. Like, I, like It's West, really interesting yeah. talking about all this community stuff when the more I look around and the more I yarn to people, I realise there is more white collar crime happening every day than there is, you know, crime yeah. on the other side of the fence, you know what I mean? And Yeah man, fucking right. And we're, like we're and that's it like big bad crime, you know, that's white yeah. collar shit. That's irreversible crime. Yeah, irreversible. Like yeah. Like the amount of people way. that are benefit benefiting off uh who, who, who's the up land the and top is like I've often thought like who builds a torture chamber or a dungeon? Mm. You find that in a castle. Yeah. Who lives in a castle? The fucking ruler. <laughs> like, we're letting these guys who have a pension for torture run us. Yeah. Like, man, I, I don't think that's right. It's not logical. No, it's not. And Do when we take the, the money... has a torture chamber in his basement to be the one in control? Like, yeah. fuck no. Fuck no. Yeah. 
but it's happening. It has been for a few hundred years. Huh? Oh, that's it. I think we're very blind to the um, the scale of that. Yeah. But once again, I think that we're going to reach a time where the pendulum's going to swing and um, again, and then back again. Oh, it always will. Yeah. But so long as you know everything kind of, I just feel that uh, I just see the curtain dropping between. You know, it's so obvious now. It's really so obvious. And media and the access of free media through the access to social media now is the way that it's getting out. Kind of in the same way that graffiti did. You know what I mean? Like yeah. in the 90s, there wasn't a way to find an alternative narrative compared to what was on to the two channels on TV yeah. Yeah. and what someone was writing on the wall. It's three. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was no other way to receive information at all. You can oh, you can get books from and other you, countries. You hear the you one know. person talking about it and think that they were wrong because everything else you heard was saying the opposite. Mm. It's a lot harder to speak the truth. You fucking, yeah. Or even even hear the truth, I mean. Mm. So in today's day and age, we have no fucking excuse. No, we have no excuse. But therefore, humans have become less resourceful than ever. It's the craziest thing. We've got access yeah. to more resource. Yeah. Don't even have to go to the library. No. You can get the shittest phone and we're ever. Dumber. And we're dumber. We're dumber than ever. Yeah. Yeah. It's a game of Scrabble. Mm. Game of Scrabble would definitely solve all the world's problems. Yeah, I really love. Paint? You gonna have a paint today? No, I haven't got any paint on me. That's why I came to suss it out. Came to catch up with you, have a chat about the spot. It's interesting seeing so many tourists coming down to take photos now, you know what I mean? And it's become a part... I, I think even the council was charging to do tours of the graffiti. Yeah. Which is a bit on the I, nose. I paint down here and people come up and film me and photograph me and not scared of me at all. But 10 years ago, they would not have come up the laneway if they saw me. It's paint. true. And I'm a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. fucking perception. Yeah, I remember when... It's I, like now, it's like, oh, that could be Banksy. <laughs> <laughs> Now you're an artist. Now, yeah, now you're an artist. It was a vandal. Yeah, it used to be a vandal. Yeah. The council says so. Your council approved. Yeah. Legal artist. It's fucking. It's interesting, man. Yeah, when I first was the legal artist, mm. fucking oath it was unheard of. People were like, "You're kidding me? You get paid for graffiti?" <gasps> Yeah, it just you know, it really like, goes to show that yeah. the narrative that was like and, and my fed dad, to people. You'll never get anywhere with that shit. And he's like, I have to take that back. Yeah. Because you're doing it. Bless him. Yeah, best <laughs> in peace, Eagle. Yeah. It's um it's very interesting as well though, as this culture grows, you know, because I mean like look at this Jarman mural. He's a very talented guy. And his murals that he like he'd be getting paid top dollar for his murals now. Yeah, They're next level. Like, professor or doctorate or whatever he did the full uni thing knows all about art yeah right shape color yeah he's qualified he can paint whatever anyone wants yeah yeah, yeah he truly can absolute beast well thank you very much Topsky. Welcome, bro. I Peace filmed, out. I fi filmed your uh, link on there, so oh, check out the Discord damn, link. Yeah, no, nah, fuck that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Follow Topsky on Instagram. Yeah. I'll put his details in the description. Please. Peace out. We have to go to the next one. Oh, oh. How long ago was it that you painted the last update? Well, oh, a month ago. So a month. And how much does the number increase? Well, I'm not sure. It's, it's at least another thousand. Yeah. But I don't want to keep. I don't want to put anything that's higher than what I. Than what you know. What I know. It's a very hard one with like that sort of warfare and numbers and. And then, you know, by the time the news is getting to us, and then once again, who's in control of the news that's getting to us? Yeah, exactly. And, and they're not even counting 10,000 missing people, you know, like... Yeah. That have been missing for, for fucking 12 weeks, under rubble, but they're not counted.
made it a fucking zero, I didn't make it a two.